by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thank you, God. Congregations. 
And so I am visiting you today from your diocese and hopefully a resource to you at this time of transition in your community. Uh, and also just a person who loves to be here. It is a beautiful, beautiful place. And you guys are really lucky. Um, is, I'm, having, I'm having a wonderful time and only wish I had gotten to be here earlier to enjoy more of what Ashland has to offer. So you all, you all are going to be fine. So thank you for hosting me. This morning we hear the story of the transfiguration which each lectionary year offers this story on the last Sunday after the Epiphany, the last Sunday before we enter the season of Lent. And we hear it from the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and today we hear it from Luke. And in each Gospel, the Transfiguration is placed within a very similar context. It has been somewhere between six and eight days since Jesus and Peter had a confrontation about what it means to be the Messiah. Peter is distraught to hear that Jesus must undergo suffering and death, saying that it must not happen. And Jesus responds to Peter saying, get behind me, Satan. And Jesus continues to let the rest of the disciples know in that moment that if any wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Now while each gospel differs a little in the retelling of the transfiguration, each one describes Peter trying to hold on to this moment of seeing Jesus dazzling in this brightness. Seeing those standing beside him, Peter says, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings. Let us hold on to this moment as long as we possibly can. Let's live in this place together. And yet after each transfiguration story, the Gospels continue with Peter and James and John heading back down the mountain, keeping quiet about what they have witnessed, watching and learning from Jesus who returns to the work of tending to the needs of the people. And this made me reflect on what Peter was trying to hold on to. That experience of brightness, that experience of having those mountaintop experiences, that moment in which we get to see God with us tangibly, I invite you to draw to mind, to go into a memory of that place. Hopefully there's multiple times that you have that feeling, an opportunity where you have journeyed to one of those thin places, one of those thin places where you are convicted of your belief in God. You are reminded of who you were created to be. You see the brightness of possibility and are full of hope. They can be small moments. They can be vacations you attended where all the realities of the world fell away and you were taken to a different place. There could be literal pilgrimage that you took. I myself got to journey to Machu Picchu. That's a mountaintop experience. Sometimes there are life experiences. I was a camp counselor for kids who were either living with or infected by HIV, and there was this time in which you were at that camp and everybody who was having that experience became part of this bubble. And you were so entrenched in the hope and the joy and everything that was happening in that experience that when you go back to your reality, it's like if you weren't in that bubble with me, you don't know what I just experienced. Sometimes it happens in the moment when you get to hold a newborn baby, that miracle. And then that miracle goes to a place of sleepless nights and heartache and raising that baby that you had that moment. 
all of these places for which we have gotten that experience in our heart of hearts always demand us to go back down the mountain. We don't get to live in those places. We never get anything done. So that experience, if we can remember that and practice the learning, the journey, the work of integrating that brightness, that hope, that belief, weaving it into our realities that lie at the bottom of that mountain, that moment when the cloud overshadows us and we are filled with fear and despair when we read the headlines, when we see the hurting of the world, and all of a sudden that moment that we had where we were so full is consumed and lost. Like, was I on vacation last week? And it is so interesting to me that this is the story that we get the Sunday before we enter the season of Lent. This opportunity for us to think about this season as a weaving together of those experiences with the heartache and the suffering and the hurting of the world. How do we hold those two things together? And we even hear Jesus' frustration with the disciples trying to figure it out. They come back down the mountain and they forget that they could, in fact, heal. Says, How much longer must I be with these people? I just showed you this thing and so quickly you have forgotten. You have forgotten the brightness of God within you. So this opportunity that we have in this season, a season that is set apart for us to practice how to integrate our knowing, our belief, our mountaintop experiences into the work of healing a very broken world. Lent is that very particular journey of holding the dazzling brightness of God as the clouds of uncertainty and suffering and death overshadow us. And what is particular about this year, about this reading, about this gospel in Luke, Matthew and Mark describe Jesus going up the mountain with Peter and James and John alone to be in solitude, to be away. And that's when the transfiguration happens. But in Luke, it is while Jesus is praying. He takes them up the mountain to pray. And that is just one practice, one place in which we can think about how we can weave together those experiences with the work through prayer. And I can't think of a time in our lives when this moment is more important than this time of prayer. But this is the time that we have to practice our prayer to draw ourselves back to those thin places, to bring ourselves back to the mountaintop, to remember that moment of miracle. That prayer, prayer can bring us to that place. So I invite you, as you enter this season, to hold on to that image, whatever was drawn up in your hearts as we spoke this morning. What was that place? What was that feeling? And how might you go back there in your prayers throughout the season? Amen. Amen.
Before we start our prayers this morning, uh, people, um, perhaps you heard that uh, Russ Body and Sarah Hopkins were vacationing in Belize, uh, I think on the event of their anniversary, and Russ became gravely ill. And as we are gathered at this moment, he is being flown from Belize uh, in air ambulance to uh, to San Antonio, um, where he will be admitted into the hospital there. So, I said the prayer this morning, and then I took my bookmark out of the exact spot. So, I will see if I can't find it because it was a particularly appropriate prayer. While I'm looking, I will also remind you that um, as we're doing our prayers today, remember that where it says silence, we invite you to add your prayer silently or aloud uh, at that moment. So. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you give strength and courage to Russ and to Sarah at this time of uncertainty that your hopefulness is embedded within them as they seek the treatment that is necessary that they may be responsive to whatever may come, trusting that it is your will that is being done. We ask that you empower those who are treating us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The prayers of the people are four and two. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Diana Akiyama, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. For Trinity in our time of transition. I ask your prayers for peace, especially for Ukraine, for goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. For the conflict with Germany. 
I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, especially remembering Catherine, Karen, Chaplain Jerry and Dunbar, Joan, Greg and Trish, Joan, Jack, Don and Johnny, Joyce, Margaret, Kaylin, Karen, Judith, Lynn, Don and Carol, Peter, Elmira, Huberta, Reverend Dr. Burt, Jackson, Kate, Seamus, Annette, Nick, Mary Pat, Hippolyta, Stephanie, Charles, Margaret, MJ and Kit. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may be found, may, may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. I ask your prayers for the gift of rain for this valley. Pray for rain. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. And the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess our sins against you, by God, and word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are not too sorry, and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we have mercy on us, and forgive us, that we need the light and your will. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing the sin to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command of Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his sign in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. And by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Papa. 
Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We, please be seated. We have a couple of announcements this morning. Um, at Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. There will be a service at noon and a service at seven. I invite you all to come and participate to start this se the season of Lent. Um, during Lent, at eight o'clock services, we will be using Rite One. So if you are a fan of Rite One, here's your opportunity to come eight o'clock in the morning and participate. Um, then I think that's that's it for yeah. Mary's Mary's my reminder. Um, we're also offering stations of the cross right. every Friday during Lent at noon. Um, it will be led by Chris and Roberta, so come join us for that. Chris Hope. Yes. Okay. I think that's it. celebrating a birthday? Well, Doug, come on up. <laughs> so, we've got our list and the prayer, and let's just say first names, and here we have Doug McDonald, but we'll call him Doug for that. Um, so, please join me. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Jeff, Anne, Betsy, Barbara, Virginia, Charlene, Doug, and Bart, as they begin another year. Grant that they be grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your witness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. 